All right, so what happens, going back in time, if Ryder decides to sign with the RDA and instead shoot the spy? And is there like a third option? Because you seem to hint that there apparently are three I, endings. I really wish. There's a game that I would record in the future called Singularity, where the end, at its very end, poses you a choice. Sign with one faction and sign with another faction, or you can just shoot both and just fuck off on your own. I really wish you do. So what happens when you actually sign with the humans? You fool. No! He kills himself? While shooting your avatar body. No. Oh. <laughs> this, uh, this essentially forces you to stay in human, you know, in just your human form completely, which is the excuse for you to just use the human gameplay, not the avatar gameplay while aligned with the human. The problem is that essentially the entire reason why Ryder came here in the first place to test the avatar program is gone. And the human campaign is essentially him being just a normal military guy. So basically you go with the avatar playthrough and you get a pretty kind of by the numbers Shit. story. Do the human gameplay and well, uh, well, the reason you get even more by the numbers story. Eradicated. Depends. Uh, Depends, because, uh, again, Waves, you have to remember, the RDAs are essentially a bunch of racist bastards when you get down to it. Oh, boy. But, so we need to see what uh, Ryder decides to do with this kind of, you know, behavior with the rest of his comrades. And hey, maybe again, now we'll that, get... That will have to be reserved for the final parts of the human campaign. And maybe now we'll get a more nuanced look at things now that we're playing from the side of the humans. Mm -hmm. Jova is the Avatar franchise. What about it is nuanced? Well, you'll be able to see. For the time being, we land crashed because of a bunch of banshees. Kendra, are you alright? I think I'm okay. I love how we, we just thing. waited until she got out to ask that in that tone. You've got to go for help. There's an RDA mining camp a few mics from here. I'll stay with the pilot and do what I can. Don't worry. I'm burning here. Help! Don't worry, don't worry. I'll get back to you in a bit. Right I'm now, I'm just not telling him about it. I'm not dead. You'll be in a moment. <laughs> My arm is turning into a pencil. So yeah, much like at the very beginning of the game, um, the human gameplay focus entirely on ranged weapons. You know, the gimmick oh. is that you have a bigger range of choice, and you can switch between what you want. You have the traditional pistols. You know, if you press up, which have infinite ammo but don't do much damage, um, an assault rifle, a, a carbine, a nail gun, a flamethrower, and later on also a grenade launcher. Most of the weapons are essentially equally viable for different reasons, but I mostly stick with uh, the the um, oof, uh, the machine gun, the one that uh, basically doesn't need to recharge until in the entire clip is uh, you know is is empty. Uh, the flamethrower and the grenade launcher. The, the flamethrower will be useful as you will see later for one specific reason. Um, but the, the machine gun is the most effective in killing basically any kind of target. Skill-wise, you have a set, but it's essentially the same as the navies. So you have the sprint, you have the healing, you have the sum. The, okay, the summoning is not their summoning nature, but Doctor Harper, head of the Avatar program, he was the mole. And now things have blown wide open. Tanjala had it right. We've got a war now. But the Navi are fooling themselves. How the hell did they expect to take on the RDA machine? We're gonna roll right through it. Uh huh. I almost feel sorry for them. Uh, well, so, yeah, every other Avatar but... narrative has suggested that the humans are actually screwed, Ryder. Ryder. Yeah, well, we don't know yet. But, um,. But, uh, and, uh, like I mentioned, and the grenade launcher is essentially your ultimate tool for killing enemies, but you need to wait to stay, to pay attention to your, um, to your distance when you actually throw the grenade. There you go, the flame flamethrower is ideal to killing the plant enemies. Again, one thing that didn't happen in the Avatar, in, so in the Navi section, for obvious reasons, was by the fact that in this case the plants can attack you. Um, and there are, can become in different varieties. The normal machine gun, you know, the normal bullets actually do fair enough against them, but the flamethrower is particularly effective against them for obvious reasons. So whenever you see an area that's infested with plant, we plant whip that out and start, you know, flaming stuff. So 
I gotta say, um, a bit earlier, I love how um, in this universe we are just there's just a puff of smoke and babbier in your armor. <laughs> that's uh, that's because I leveled up and I'm getting that new one. I do like but this yeah, look. I, got him. I do like the look at least it gets me. Most of the human armors are actually pretty cool to look at. Uh, they, they did a decent job that they differentiate in the various classes of humans. Uh, um, by the end of the day, again, it's it's only the stats that matter in this case. Uh, again, overall, I find the human campaign actually easier than the Avatar one because, because of a simple reason. One, the objectives are relatively si are much simpler. Two, despite the fact that you're going basically with the same direction, and two, you have an easier time with uh, with your firearms, and also three, killing. Uh, all kind of enemies, including the Fall of Pandora, actually gives you more experience points, meaning that it's actually easier for you to level up. And even your Jedi side objectives attached to each map would actually be easier to complete compared to the Avatar, to the, sorry, to the, to the Navi campaign. So again, you're taking an easier time going. Don't worry about the, the scanning and the data log, because the, the, the entries are identical to the one in the avatar campaign and uh, after you beat the game all entries are unlocked automatically so you, you there's no problem when it comes to 100 percent completion on, on that front at the very least mm -hmm. there you go but otherwise for the time being as uh, officer midori said there's an rda camp we can actually ask for help uh, nearby Thankfully, there don't seem to be particularly navvies in the meantime, just these viper wolves. Oh yeah, we had to play the game of shoot the doggies. Basically. Um, again, the, the gameplay for the human is much more frantic because when it came to the, to the navi, again, because it was more, much more centered around, um, you know, the, the CQC weapons, particularly again, just the double blades and the um, and the baton. You were much you know, encouraged to just bomb rush towards the enemy and just make them shish kebab. You know, in this case, it plays. It, it, your best strategy is well the one of any good shooter that's worth their salt, as in Doom, as in never stay still when it comes to actually shooting, unless you're actually torching the plants, for example. You know, when it comes to the enemies, it's best if you're always on the move. You know, um, and keep an eye focused everywhere, essentially. So, which creates a lot of franticness uh, for the more, you know, intense uh, intense shooting parts. Which again, at the end of the day, it, it does the job. So at the end of the day, I guess I would say the human campaign is my favorite of the two. Um, even though, you, again, you're technically playing, you know, as the bad guys who are just invading the turf of these poor natives and just destroying their houses and killing them in the... In the you know, in the hundreds, uh, Jesus Christ. But again, I do still at least command the Ubisoft to give you the choice to do that because you'd feel, if this game was done today, no, they would probably have the campaign center solely squarely around the Navi, you know, just just to be sure. Hmm. So you can tell this was done in, in a different time. Again, do they at least give a more nuanced look at the humans? Because one of our yes. critiques about... Again, you... Again, the, you will be able, to, after each of these kind of missions, you'll be able to return to the point where you, you know, started, called Hell's Gate, you know, report to, to Falco and the Doctor, and you will get a more scientific explanation of what the songs are supposed to be and, you know, the idea behind the Well of Souls. So while with the Navi you get the more mystical kind of experience because you're seeing that through their own views, with the humans, you will actually get a scientific reason why you're supposed to do this. You know, and at the same time, you will see things transition when it comes to the command of uh, of the human base. Uh -huh. While as in the Navi campaign, as you remember, you just saw things happening and you would have to guess. Conversely, however, as you can imagine, you will not know much about the Navis in this situation. But gotta be honest, that's all right. Anyway, much like with the Navi campaign, even here at the teleport point, you can also play the game of Risk, just with the roles inverted, you know. 
there you go it's basically the same use your points uh, you know um collect uh, use the use the points to actually you know use the resources to expand your army you know invade territories conquer conquer the sectors uh, you know gain bonuses uh, derived from conquering each territory easy as that yep All right, let's go to talk to whoever's in charge here. Let's see. No, it's not you. It's just scientist. Oh, with a Pandorapedia article on him. Yeah, so you get different different entries based on different possession. Okay, it's Winslow. Who the hell are you? <laughs> what kind of accent is that? My chopper went down over that ridge and my team's still back there. I need a new bird. Well, you've landed in a bloody hellhole, mate. Oh, it's supposed to be Australian, okay. Science crew huddled in the bunker. Let me see, give me a second. I... You can take the Scorpion. She's fueled up, but her firing circuits are fried. If the missiles won't work, then you watch them buzzards. Bloody killers. Look around. They're destroying my... Uh, excuse me. <laughs> now don't worry. Scorpion's your best bet to get... Can these the NPCs stop uh, showing around like this? Uh... Contrary to other people, I don't mind. I don't have to have the NPCs move erratically just to give me the illusion that the world is alive. <laughs> Let me see, there you go. Winslow is voiced by David K. Uh, which, if I recall correctly, is he Australian or not? Probably not. Hmm. Let me see. Okay, let me also check out a bit the base. Why not? Also, that's a very stock sound alarm sound. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, there we go. Uh, uh it was... Oh, it's, David K is actually Canadian. Not even close, baby. It's Australia. Uh, apparently he voiced the voice of Megatron in Beast Wars. Huh. huh. Oh, that's... My... Okay, I, I, I'm definitely an idiot. That's David K uh, who voiced Megatron in Beast Wars. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mentioned, David K. I'm also a colossal idiot because I forgot that he's Clank's voice actor from the Ratchet and Clank series. Uh, I recently got a reminder of that because he's also the voice of the Celestial in the Eternals movie. Fun so, fact, he also that voiced... That on me. Fun fact, David K has actually voiced both Megatron and Optimus Prime. I guess in different respective series. Uh. Yes. There you go. The Scorpion, again, the gameplay when it comes to even the vehicles is slightly different than the ones obviously for the Navi campaign because most of the vehicles have some, a weapon of some kind that you can use, which means you also get some shooting sections while using them. Particularly in this case, the Scorpion has a machine gun that you can use to pulverize the Banshees, the nest that they live in. Some plants that can actually give you, can actually give you trouble or even some of floating rocks that can actually, you know, in this case, sorry, clean you the path, potentially. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Midori. Yeah, the other guy that was very little made it. There's nothing I could do. The Banshees are pretty hairy out there. You're going to need the chopper missile online. Let me guess. The idea is that most of the squad is just doing our duties, but then we figure out that the General Falco is evil. So we desert and then basically turn on him, you know, because... Okay, you have, you have sort of a general idea where the plot might be going, but trust me, it's not... It, it, okay, it's not going to say so, it's not that simple, because... No, it's still relatively simple, but it's not the one that you mentioned. Don't worry, you'll be able to see just in due time what happens. I just got that feeling because, you know, obviously, um, what's her name? Clearly would not be on board with Officer this. Midori. Yeah, so my guess is that she'll discover what Falco is truly up to and then it'll be, us to it'll be up to us to stop him. 
essentially. Depends. Uh, again, again, you you guys will be able to see in due time because again, after each mission, mission you go back to Hell's Gate uh, and uh, use the knowledge that you found to again in this case for the human find the actual well of souls which again it's it basically demonstrates uh, the weirdness of the final level in general because uh, um both for the navi and for the humans uh, it's only rider who seems to be able to use the shards uh, in order to actually pinpoint the locations of the tree and the, the actual songs which in turn allows uh, the faction to find the well of souls so the other Faction finding it uh, over only in the meantime without someone like Ryder on them, it feels just wrong. Convenient. So yeah, too, too convenient. I get the idea why they wanted to do that, so you can actually have a final conflict. But again, I don't believe there were okay. easy ways to circumvent okay. that with the plot okay. while well, keeping the idea that only Ryder can do it. Uh huh. And help the base. I'll meet you back there. Where are you going? I saw an abandoned camp I want to check out. Uh, -huh. uh Midori, not for nothing, but you just demonstrated that going alone, regardless of who you are, is not a great idea. So, are you sure you want to venture alone to this camp? Yes, sure. don't worry, I know, I'm capable. Yeah, everyone is, uh, because the RDA apparently still manages to, man to train, uh, to have a fucking, you know, powerful military force. Uh, but at the same time, it showcases that it's best never to walk alone on Pandora. <laughs> ow, ow. Yeah, apparently Pandora has also has these bomb spitting plants. They, they look like they straight came out from Crash Bandicoot. Interesting. They're called bloated stems. Again, that's not a bad idea for an original concept because if I can create the movie did not add uh, something like that. And as you can see, the environment is accommodating a bit over the actual gameplay of the flying vehicle in this case because when it came to the Navi campaign, in order to reflect the fact that you were riding in Banshee, the, the canyon parts uh, were not that large, uh, you know, and you were mostly just flying through rings, uh, you know, in order to um, to reach point B from point A. In this case, you have also objectives to destroy, the canyons are much larger for you to operate, you have the Banshee potentially pestering you on that, and, uh, you know, and the, the plants on top of that too. And again, it's, it feels like they're actually trying to recreate the franticness of the shooting gameplay that's on the ground, just on a different screen on the air. So again, that's another bit where the human campaign, in my opinion, like, you know, excels a bit over the one of the Navi. And how fucked up is that? The fact that in a game like this, it's, it makes you, you know, it's, it's a bit better to play with the bad guys. Um, you probably played those, so you can tell me, Jova. I know for a fact that at least the early Bayformers video official tie-in video games allow you to play uh, both as the the, the, the Autobots, Autobots and the Decepticons. And the Decepticons. Is it also a case there where playing as the Decepticons is more fun? Well, okay, let me put it like this. It depends on some of the missions here and there. The Decepticon campaign is arguably the tougher one. However, that is the campaign that pretty much uh, encourages you to wreck all the environments. Where with the Autobots one, you're kind of, you know, okay, you're not necessarily you're not necessarily yeah. punished for. Oh no 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 no! You can still wreck things as the Autobots, but the game will wag its finger at you for doing so. Commander Falco's ready for you. All right, we don't have much time. I'm gonna hand this over to Dr. Monroe. Hello, Rack. I'm going to keep the saints. We're working on a project that will allow the RDA to bring peace to the planet. Oh, it sounds hot. Starts with you, our signal specialist. This is the sector you're currently in. We need you to go to these three points. Once there, you must collect small shards of unobtainium. You will then take these three shards to this location. An old willow tree. I'll explain more once you get it. Again, okay, so this you know, is on paper, it's basically the same as the one of uh, uh, that they told you the Navi. But the Navi is, again, not having the same knowledge of humans and talking in a more mystical kind of way. They did mention something more about grab the shards, take it to the willow tree and sing the song. 
In this case, it's again, it's a bit more dry, but at least you get a scientific explanation. And again, it will further elaborate it on later on. Not as only that. So there is, a, there is also a good sense of discovery in this case. So it's it's particularly recommended you play the Navi campaign first and the human one later. So you feel a bit more satisfied in case of not understanding stuff that you might have not known. And again, I'll, give, I'll give them credit. They do give a more nuanced look. As far as the humans know, they're trying to establish peace on the well, as far as most of the humans know, anyway. Remember, Jova, it's just like in the movie where Sigourney Weaver thought the Avatar program was for peace, but Colonel Quaritch only wanted to blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, though, um, but yeah, um, the interesting thing with the first Bayformers game is like, well, I'm, I don't think it actively penalizes you, but I do wonder if it may, if you may potentially lose out on, like, getting oh, some no. of the... Sorry. So it's a weird rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the dog just doesn't have contempt for Ryder Gone, Jova. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if you lose out on the bonus, though it's a possibility. But that said, I mean, okay, it's not like Amazing Spider-Man 2 where the game does actively penalize you for doing things your own way. Like, mm -hmm. no, no, you, you can still cause destruction as the Autobots, but, you know... Again, the game does not encourage you wrecking it. Again. Is it like is it like in LA in the war where every time you brought over people the message pops up saying they're meant to protect the citizens? More like you get uh, okay. Basically in the Bayformers games, you can get bonus art, you know, basically all this bonus material stuff by completing certain tasks. As Decepticons, one of those special tasks is causing enough destruction to get enough of the emblems essentially. The more you do a certain task, the more the emblem show up here. I don't think that causing destructions as the Autobot necessarily X's it out, but from what I've seen, it can interfere with your chain bonus, essentially. And again, mind you, this is just for bonus stuff. It doesn't... Um, from what I recall, it does not interfere with, you know, how well you're doing in the main game, essentially. It's just that if you're okay. going for that collectible stuff, essentially. But yeah, in the meantime, two things. As soon as you collect the first shard, the Navi start attacking you properly. So you need to be on the watch out on that. They can be a bit ruthless, but they're still doable. Again, your focus, it's, it's best if you actually try to stay on, on the movement. Um, two, that other bit of explanation that the doctor gave you, it's also another answer to a potential question where I'd ask, well, why don't I just grab the three shards from the same place and be and be done with it. But no, because each separate shards contains a small different tune that needs to be elaborated. And the and the doc even goes with the parallel of the song that the Navi, the Navi used. So again, you have an extra incentive on why you're supposed to collect the shots in different locations. They're similar but different enough that they feel like you need yes. This is unfortunately connected to how an Octanium works, which is something that the movie didn't really bother to explain. So, so basically, <laughs> what you're telling me is that Unobtainium could help make for a sick rock band experience. Potentially. Again, I will reserve it to when I actually showcase the, the um, Unobtainium uh, entry from the Wondorapedia. But let me assure you, you know how in the movie, and basically each of us or as they raised the question, you know, what exactly was an Unobtainium and why the, the RDA wanted it so badly? When you actually get to know that, it does make a lot of sense, but you really wish the movie had some kind of way to explain it in any kind of fashion, uh, you know? This would be interesting. And I, I, it, it might be a small throwaway line as well in the beginning narration, but I don't really think it does. Excuse me, coming hey. through. Yeah, for the time being, for the second, sh for this particular shard, you are also supposed to actually exit the, the falling cave. You know, actually, go. now that I think about it, maybe I'm forgetting, but the colleague. So yeah, so he dies in this playthrough. It's odd though, like, Firecock, he kind of disappears from the story in the Avatar playthrough. Mm, kinda, he gets killed off screen during the attack of Inavi yeah. base. In, the, in this one, however, he essentially you know, he's a bit missing in action, but we will see later what happens to him. Oh, he actually survived that fall. Well, who knows? Maybe we just found his body, Jova. Or may... Shoot, come to think Again, of it. I... 
If he Again, died in the see. Navi body, then shouldn't his human body be, you know... Wake up, but that's the thing. Since they did work, uh, both him and his collaborators work along with the Navi, we don't really know where their human bodies are currently, which is why it is another important thing, uh, you know, for the RDA to find them, because now it's pretty much a declared, very much a declared traitor, and we need to, you know, hunt them down if they're still alive. Uh-huh. If you don't remember, the doctor had two collaborators working out with him, so those are those are also on the list too. Potential boss fights, I'm guessing. Basically, I can I can warn you already. This game doesn't, as it also was showcased a bit in my campaign. This game doesn't really have that much of a concept for a for boss fights, uh -huh. mostly because again, it, it's the, the single player uses every every single asset from the multiplayer and just puts it there without creating too much radio you know, stuff. Uh, you know. Alas. Excuse me. Gotta gotta use the use my scorpion by. <laughs> All right, one last shard, and it's not that far. And I think I don't not supposed to actually reach it by air. Again, remember, this was also kind of a blind playthrough, so I was experimenting all over it. Again, it's also a testament of how good the difficulty is, uh, despite being being fixed. It's not; it's far from being too easy. So at the very least, it requires you to pay attention, but it's not stupidly hard to make you rage quit, uh, you know, because you're constantly getting upgrades, uh, you know, you're constantly, you know, becoming better, you know, and um, and are incentivized to progress further. And each campaign is not excessively long, meaning that you you, you do not overstay very welcome. Mm -hmm. Now I need you to find the willow tree. We'll use it to generate a unique harmonic. Okay. Ow. Yeah, it's another thing that I didn't mention. When it comes to actually fighting the Navi opponents, they can all, they also have basically the entire arsenal that you would have as a Navi, as in the, the CQC weapons, but also bows and arrows. Apparently, sometimes when they throw bows and arrows at you, um, they can actually stun lock you like that, that motion that you see, where you get, you know, ragdolled, potentially behind. It's... It basically just there to make you lose your time. I don't even I don't really know why it's there. Possibly a thing that was supposed to you use for balancing the multiplayer where they just kept for a single player, but it makes things a bit slightly more annoying, admittedly. But yeah, at least for the time being you can see Ryder doesn't really have a problem continuing the extermination of an Avi, so glad to know that there is that. All in the name of peace. Yeah. Again, it's the it's the whole that caught not that caught, I mean, but uh, that kind of games around made around this time always had the 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 innovation of wanting to have give you the moral choice. Uh, but in order to balance that effectively, they made the bad choice, uh, choices cartoonishly excessively bad. Um, games like this, uh, the Fable series, uh, the Infamous series to an extent, uh, where being good is just, you know, have some common sense of some kind, you know, and not being a dick, while in basically the bad, the uh, bad karma, the bad choices for uh, the examples uh, are basically being the worst scum of the face of the earth. Which again is a thing, honestly, like when you get down to it, the Navi are arguably pretty bad themselves, which is slaughtering well, that humans. Is, that, even if it's true, Jova, again, there's still the matter of the fact that this is, was their territory, and these guys just showed up, started wrecking the place just for a bunch of rocks, and when the, when these people legitimately complained, you know, about it, they started slaughtering them. So I'm sorry, Jova, I'm kind of starting to understand the retaliation with violence, particularly for the, particularly considering the fact that the Navis are supposed to be a peaceful race to begin with. Oh, no, 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 Tio. I get that. What I don't get is the narrative trying to pretty much spruce up the Navi as completely pure when they clearly have their own problems, too. Like, oh, don't get me wrong, the Navi are technically in the right, but then when the plot has them do something that takes them over the line and yet pretends like, oh, that actually didn't happen, that's the issue I have more so with, essentially. 
Not the idea that they would fight back, no. I totally do get that. It's just that, well, the narrative of both the movie and by extension the game likes to portray the Navi as just the pure ones when, again, lacking nuance, essentially. I mean... Alright, thankfully, after each mission, let me check with the Navi campaign, you get very close to your extraction point anyway, so you can use it to actually get back, in this case, to Hell's Gate. Really easy. Simple enough. Oh, there's a new ace pilot, uh, did you say? <sighs> Might that be Michelle Rodriguez's character? Who knows? Uh... <laughs> Let's see what you are, what we got. There you go. I gotta love how in the case of human armors, some of them get to be bulkier, but the one that you get next, which is technically an upgrade because it has better stats, has technically less stuff on it. It's kind of the equivalent of the chainmail bikini meme for female characters in MMO. Alright, on to the next point. Well, let's, let's talk to this, uh, this pilot. Well, and yes, well, uh, she is Michelle Rodriguez's character. Voiced by Michelle Rodriguez. So. Yes, like I mentioned, every character that he was in the movie actually gets a better actor or actress reprising the roles. No sound alike on that front. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty cool. Trudy doesn't really have much of a characterization. She really is just your pilot, but it is cool actually that they bother to actually like commit you. to the character. It does make you wonder why couldn't they get anybody from the Tintin movie to reprise their role in the game in, in Ubisoft's game? I, I, I truly do wonder if this is a case where James Cameron being dearly attached to this franchise, you know, being supervision allowed Ubisoft to be more close to that. Um, I don't know what the specific are instead for the Peter Jackson's King Kong video game, if it's a case also there were sound alikes or the actor reprise the roles, so I don't know anything about that. Yeah. But this might be a more unique case more than anything. I am seeing what you mean, though. It's like, well, again, yes, the humans are definitely the bad guys. However, the story mode for the humans gives already better nuance than the Navi one did. The Navi one is essentially, oh, stop the humans, they're all bad, 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 and kill, 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 kill. this guy doesn't trust you even though you have constantly proved yourself, and so on and so forth. At least with the human one here, there's definitely a sense that something is not all as it seems to be all right. from our end. Let's get a scientific explanation on what the 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 what we're doing, uh, you know, is supposed to be from Doctor Monroe. Ah, Ryder, you brought me the first harmonic, and my clipboard disappeared from my hand. Weird, isn't it? Running. The emulator? Ah, you don't know yet. All in good time. Right now, we need to upload that harmonic. Pop it into the module, and let's see what we've got. All right, let's do yeah. exactly what he did. What he, unless, what he has to... unless the clipboard is actually the first harmonic. Sure. Maybe. Or maybe it's the second. All right. One. So what's all this stuff for, Doc? Yes, let me explain. The Navi have a unique relationship with the planet. Using a sacred site, the Tree of Souls, they're able to link directly with the ecosystem. It's how they communicate with the entire planet. But we're searching for something different. Our research tells us that there is another site that can help us sever the Navi communication. We're after a site that has been dead for thousands of years, a place the Navi call the Well of Souls. Uh. If we can find this old dormant site and awaken it, I believe we can use it as a back door to Awa. We shut down the Navi bond with the planet, then we can take control. That is, this is fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, huh. So basically, we're going to be so cutting the off their phone location? signal. Okay, doesn't this, doesn't this kind of clash with the idea that we were trying to bring it's peace to the whole thing? This, uh... is it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, like, peace give, give for us. Give us a second. Let's see what the first harmonic actually does to the map. There you go. It actually Excellent. reduces the possible spot. Those are possible locations for the dormant site. With each harmonic, we'll reduce the number of red dots till we have one. That is actually a pretty clever way to to do it. You came up with this plan? Indeed. Ah, to be a genius. 
Uh, yeah. Very generic genius. Let's well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, well, you know. Start calling yourself professor genius. Well, you know, like maybe there's a lot more story to this guy. What is the uh, what does the um, Pandorapedia say about him? I will mention it um, when the 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 entry will come. But uh, to answer the question, yes, uh, apparently the idea of using the emulator would be to essentially shut down the connection that the Navi have with the rest of the ecosystem. Um, that will not kill them, but it will basically create a huge state of confusion. And when uh, the doctor said, talked about peace, he meant it in a sense that the Navi will be basically ineffective and they will have no other choice than surrender. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, that, okay, so okay. basically... The only reason why it's peaceful is because it's literally a non-violent solution. Makes me wonder why Ryder is still going through this with no questions asked, because, well, we've seen that, okay, regardless of which option you choose, Ryder's been shown to be a very moral kind of guy up to this point. So shouldn't this be the point where he starts to have doubts or something? But no, he seems completely on board with it here. Is this some kind of a clever allegory for Nintendo going around shutting down ROM sites? Or sure, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, emulators are evil. That will get you to your cutting off communication with the planet. There is there is a, such a thing as applicability, so we're gonna use that. Anyway, <laughs> see you for the next part. See ya. Yeah. Yeah.